I led PepsiCo as chairman and CEO for a dozen years. I wouldn't have been there without paid leave. Four times in my decades-long career, my employers gave me the benefit of extended time off, with pay, including twice when I gave birth and once to recover from a terrible car crash. I also unexpectedly got it early in my career at Boston Consulting Group and was able to help care for my father, who was ill with cancer. Without that leave, I'm sure I would have had to quit. Instead, I had the safety of a paycheck. When I returned to work, I was more committed to BCG than ever. I had stability and could carry on. As the debate swirls around whether the U.S. should guarantee some paid leave for all, we must remember that we are dealing with a human issue and not a political issue. The reality is that our roads aren't straight. We all experience births and deaths and accidents and illnesses, but these shouldn't cast individuals or families into economic despair by denying them income when they may need it most. Paid leave has been proven to keep people from dropping out of the workforce, particularly women, and especially helps low-income workers. For companies, it reduces turnover, improves employee loyalty, and keeps everyone healthier when people stay home because they are sick. Further, amid the great re-evaluation of our work and family lives spurred by the COVID-19 crisis, employers can't be naive about the war for talent. Paid leave is a benefit that the next generation is right to expect. In a competitive marketplace for the best and brightest, it's a no-brainer. So, how do we do it? Let's start with a serious discussion about implementation, and not gloss over the concerns. Entrepreneurial ventures and small businesses, in particular, are reluctant to take on the extra costs or the disruption of coping without key employees, even for a short time. Piecemeal regulations and paperwork also stand in the way. Smart federal policy that accounts for these burdens and streamlines the rules is the right first step.